Hey everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the HeartSpace podcast with myself Jasmine and my wonderful co-host Alicia. We also have a very special guest that I'm so excited for today, Lucas Mack. He is a TEDx speaker, a published author, and he has his very own podcast called The Golden Rule Revolution. Welcome, brother. How are you today? I am doing so well, and thank you both for having me on. I'm so honored, and I love that I get to be the seventh guest on your podcast, my license plate number has been 777. Oh, Seven has awesome. been a number of mine. I'm born Lucky on the show. Yeah, so thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you. That was meant to be, for sure. I'm yeah. big on numbers and angel numbers and all that and all those little signs we get from the universe. But we we would really love to hear your journey, um, where it all started, because as we know, there's this great awakening happening mm-hmm. on the planet at the moment, um, people from all around the globe are waking up to the corruption that is taking place. And so where, where do we start with you? Where did your journey start? Where did you start to learn something wasn't quite right? Mm. Well, I feel like I've had multiple awakenings. <laughs> um, and I laugh because I have. And I grew up in a really abusive home. And I was severely abused in every category imaginable. And that I used to disassociate and fly over myself, like float over myself third person as I watched things happen. Um, And I grew up in a very religious household with a dogmatically Catholic father married a Jewish evangelical mother and everything revolved around religion. Everything revolved around this concept of God. And behind the scenes, it was hell in front of people was professed heaven. So I grew up incredibly confused, Mm. which led very early on to an awakening. I always was trying to figure out, I say in my Ted talk, I could describe my life growing up in two words, fear and confusion. I was so afraid and I was so confused. So it led me on this journey of, I knew that there was a lie. I knew the veneer. I knew the facade. I also didn't know where it originated from. So I started to deconstruct religion. I can give a dissertation on every, I mean, denomination, Protestant denomination, the reformation, every Catholic, like, I went hard in the paint trying to understand what's the origin to all this. Like how is every church or really functioning the exact same way where there's someone authority and everyone sits and receives. I mean, schools are the same way. Churches are the same way. TV sets are the same way. And our homes are the, the pews, you know, like what is this whole thing? Um, So I knew very on, learned very on about the Vatican and what was going on in the Vatican and what are the denominations? How do the Jesuits infiltrate? How do they smile? What is the two-faced veneer, the smile, the narcissistic charm and the come behind and attack? And essentially like wolves don't do this as much, but coyotes, when they kill prey, they'll send a coyote out to get the prey's attention. They'll, they'll, uh, They'll attract a dog. And they'll bark and that dog will come out and the rest of the pack comes behind the Mm. dog and kills it. And that is the best way I can describe how I saw the Vatican and and religion doing this. And I was joking around with someone the other day, and this is not to attack anyone with a religious view. I'm not. However, it's time for all of us to be free. Mm. And um, it's like you, you, we have so much abuse In in every form, you know, it's abusive. Someone who wants to be hugged and they're not hugged. Mm. That's abuse. I describe abuse as anything that constricts the heart. And if we use that definition, then all of us get to heal. It's not a matter of like, well, was I raped or was I beat or like I had it okay. No, we had it as much as we had it to heal and experience trauma so that we can come on the other side of this. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. So this whole veneer of... Um, religion and 
confusion and God and the concept of love in heaven and eternity and, and freedom and all these things just didn't align to my experience. And so I think I'm losing my trap train of thought a little bit, but I woke up from what was happening religiously, but I was still stuck in it. Mm. And in 2016, I started having flashbacks of the abuse. I finally, through a whole bunch of circumstances, started integrating first person memories. Like I did not have a first person memory before the age of 20 until 2016, when I was 34 years old. Um, no joke. I used to sit around fire, drink whiskey with my friends and you know, smoke cigars. And, and I'd ask them, do you guys have first person memories of your childhood? And they'd be like, yeah. And like, I don't have any first person memories of like, I'm always third person when I'm in my home. Yeah. Until 2016, when I started having for, it was like, everything started integrating and it was very intense time. Mm -hmm. So I went on this healing journey. I left religion. It was really like, you know, I'd read the Bible, King James Bible seven times, cover to cover in 14 years. I had fasted legit only water Sunday night to Tuesday morning for five years. I have, I have prayed two hours a day. I have done everything. I'm like, I've read every one of these books. I can give you a dissertation, all this stuff. And still I was struggling with addiction, with secrets, with all these things that eventually came out. So it led me on this healing journey and I kind of disassociated from not consciously, but I disassociated from the business community. I, I had a marketing agency. I disassociated from the political environment that I was so plugged into. I disassociated from religion. I just went on this healing journey and was solely focused on my own healing, aware that there is a deep state, aware that the Vatican, I mean, I could give it, I could explain the black Pope, the white Pope. I could explain the gray Pope. I could explain how it all works wow. together. I could, I could explain these things. However, what I could not figure out until 2020 and I found Q, Q was the thread for me oh. to understand it, it. Like Q made my life make sense. Like, I knew what the Jesuit world does. And I know people would say, perhaps there's lots of nice Jesuits and I'm sure there are, but there's also lots of nice, all sorts of things that, that we don't, yeah. we don't, it's you know, of so what? Than you know? everything. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And um, so when I found Q, it was like, okay, everything in my life, I understood my life. I understood the, the pain and trauma of my household. I understood who the family that I came from was. Um, it's interesting. I didn't vote for Donald Trump in 20, uh, 2016. And I told my wife, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a freedom loving constitutionalist. Like I, I, I love politics. I love the founding fathers of the United States and their writings and their teachings and their words. And I wasn't anti Donald Trump, but I had this sense, like, it's important that I don't vote for him so that I can share with other people that I vote for him. And I told my wife that, and she's like, what does that mean? I'm like, I don't know. I just have this premonition that I'm going to have to tell people I didn't vote for him. Well, what's interesting. That was 2016. That's when all my healing started. And I went into this healing world, the spiritual world where most people were anti, were very on the left path, or I would say, or, yeah. you know, yeah. anti, they think Donald Trump's a narcissist, like all this stuff. And this is not a pro Donald Trump thing, but it, it was interesting where I was able to share all this stuff and then say to them, like, man, I didn't vote for him, but have you looked at this? Mm -hmm. And because I was able to say, well, I didn't vote for him, but I started watching mm -hmm. him and studying him. And um, it's brought a lot of people. <laughs> I was red pilling people like crazy. Like, you get a red pill, you get a red pill. <laughs> <laughs> um in a beautiful and gentle and authentic way. It wasn't like I, I did this and how could you not know this? It was like, Hey, I didn't know. And I discovered. And so that's how the awakening I'm just sharing a long like threaded story of, I was aware of like the, the religious aspect of it all, but I didn't understand fully how the corporations yeah. uh, played okay. into everything and how I understood the Clintons, but I didn't understand the Epstein the world and that deeper yeah. layer. Um, so 
Yeah. It's all, yeah, it's all one thing. It's a big spider web. It's yes. A, yes. Yeah. For sure. And it all interlocks too. And so going back to Q, how did you come across Q? When did that start for you? <laughs> I... Um, I think you was significant. It, it was significant in both mine and Alicia's journey too. Would you say, Alicia? When oh, the yeah, Q phenomenon started, and then we started looking at the drops, and it, it taught us how to connect the dots together. Essentially, exactly. I got Q t-shirts made. That's <laughs> and I was rocking That's them. I love that. The um, you know what's interesting? I like bringing it back to the number seven. So Q is the seventeenth letter of the alphabet, and Hi. One is beginning, seven is completion. And I really look at Q signifying the completion of this time Absolutely. that there and eight in the Bible is new beginning. Like they were circumcised on the eighth day. Uh, God rested on the seventh day on the eighth day. He started again. It's the signification of there's this new beginning coming. Um, so I, I, like I said, I, I, disconnected and I say disassociated, but really I disconnected from the political world and the religious world and um, really the business world. And I was running a company, but doing it loosely with my employees and they knew I was struggling. <laughs> I feel bad for most of them. They were probably like, what was going on with them? Um, but I didn't find Q until 2020 and mm -hmm. I was on TikTok and TikTok's algorithm is the most aggressive I've found algorithm in social media. So like you spend a second longer on one post than another, it's going to feed it right away. And yeah. I let, I was led to this, where we go, one, we go all yeah. hashtag. And I kept seeing that. So then I plugged it into Twitter and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like my <laughs> mind was blown. And then I found the, uh, the boards and I started learning the boards and understand the boards. And I read, I've read every single, I treated the Q post like I treated the Bible, meaning I read it cover to cover every word. And there's a whole bunch of theory of like, did Q, the original Q was that the original Q were there many others? And that's yeah. not necessarily significant to me at all because there's multiple yeah. writers of the Bible yet. The Bible threads through Genesis one to revelation chapter 22, yeah. and it completes a narrative. So I'm not concerned about the author of the post. What was so beautiful for me to read through them all. And it took a long time to read through them all, but reading through them all, it was done in the Socratic method. It was always in question form. Mm. It was never in authoritarian form. And that was so counter the world. You go to the media, the authority tells you, you go to church, yeah. the authority tells you, you go to government, the authority tells you. And here was this <sighs> breath of questions mm. and it just allowed us, it was like a safe space to be like, wow, yes, this all makes sense. Yeah. So that's, I, I joke around, like I found Q through TikTok. It's such a funny thing, but I did. <laughs> and, um, you know, and I've had like Jordan Sather, I've had some Q people in the Q community on and, you know, and then the whole awake, great awakening, it's kind of fractioned because the Jesuits get, it, it's how they do churches or anything. They do not want unity. Wherever there's unity, they infiltrate to create disunity. That's it. Because where there's unity, we're unstoppable. That's why that where we go, one, we go all is so powerful. That's why Jesus said a house divided against itself cannot stand. But when you are one, that's why the Shema is hero Israel. The Lord, thy God is one. God is oneness. So if we are to be like God, we are to live in oneness. And it yes. cannot be divided, but the, we won't call it satanic forces, the dark forces, the cabal, whatever it is, they are thriving off dividing, even within the awakening movement. Yeah. They have yes. and they've been infiltrating the, the awakening movement as such too. And it's, it's such a great time though. Like it's such an exciting time to be alive now. Like we're at the mm. precipice of great change. You know, the people that are awake now sharing these stories, having these conversations are essentially the movers and the shakers that are going to bring about this change too. So um, yeah. And, and even going back to Donald Trump too, because I was totally asleep to the politics of what was happening in America. And I was brainwashed essentially by the media, by what we were being told here in New Zealand. And the this, that same narrative about Donald Trump going around the world where he's just like a racist bigot and, and whatnot. So when 
for me, my awakening started with a documentary called The Fall of the Cabal. Great documentary. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that one? Oh, yeah. And yeah. the sequel. <laughs> All the episodes of the sequel too, yeah. yeah. I'm actually in the process of um, still watching uh, the sequel because there's Uh so many parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's been really great for me because waking up more so in 2020, that's when I got, oh, I went right down the rabbit holes. (laughs) But, um, you know, like it's a a lot more of it now is making sense to what yes. I was witnessing back in 2020. So watching the sequel, I'm like, oh, okay, click, click, click. These are all going click and it's making so much more sense now that I'm able to um, articulate articulate it to other people where it does make sense and it's not in little parts and fractions because I would try and sort of explain it to people like who the cabal are and people be like, what? Because they, I, I wasn't able to articulate how it, it, it was birthed. And that's when, when you mentioned Jesuits and it goes right back. It goes yeah. to them, doesn't it? Yes. So I wasn't able to explain that before. So um, anyone that is watching this, as I've mentioned before, for the Cabal, the uh, sequel, if you want to learn how the Cabal was birthed and how it has been ruling, controlling this world uh, for so, so, so long, um, that would be my recommendation. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, I have the I wrote a book in 2014, and in the book I say content without context is a very dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. And the only question that provides context to a story is the question why. Mm-hmm. And the fall of the Cabal sequel, the origin of the Kazarian Mafia, and understanding this whole origin. And I have a Jewish family. And understanding, like, it is a complete, utter, like, what, everything is inverted truth, which the Bible said they would call evil good and good evil, and everything's inverted. That's what the Satanic Bible is, the inversion of the right-hand path. And um, so what's so interesting about the sequel, I find, is now that's the sequel of Fall of the Ball and the origin preceded what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. And I'll never forget that uh, Vladimir Putin... (laughs) said when they annexed Crimea, he said, Crimea is to Russia as Jerusalem is to Israel. And I didn't understand that. Like, what does that mean? But now I'm seeing that Crimea was the the birthplace of the Orthodox Church, which essentially now Russia is this moral it, it's so inverted. If you're listening and you're still watching mainstream news and you think Russia is bad and, and mm-hmm. Ukraine is good, then I really implore you to look at like what is actually going on. But it's just crazy. It's so crazy. The Matrix is so nuts that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if all of a sudden they're like, and the color red is actually blue. And you've all been like, wait, what? You know? um, but yeah, I'm glad you, you mentioned the sequel because it, preceded everything that's going on currently right now in the world absolutely yeah Yeah. and then out of the shadows um mouthy buddha and his documentary series he did a really good job of like breaking down tom hanks and hollywood and then like look into that one i haven't seen that one oh sisters i'll send that to you um awesome yeah that's that's like a whole other thing that goes into anthony bourdain and and chester bennington and john the but it goes into like irrefutable evidence because he is a i don't know who mouthy buddha is like a very important anon where he's a film director producer so the way he lays it out is like a hollywood level but he does the digs and researches and he pulls all the stuff together it's incredible awesome that sounds like something i'd love to watch yeah 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 <laughs> yeah always trying to um, um level up and educate ourselves eh? like yeah. With yeah. So, yeah and you know it's interesting just the there's so much darkness obviously and, and it's important i think to know what this is it's there it is important to know the darkness it is and it's important to stare it right into the eyes and not avert our eyes. This is why child abuse gets away with it. Cause people don't want to look at it and you have to look at it and look it yeah. right in the eye. Yeah. And yeah. then be the light. 
Because the only way we know we can be the light is how dark we know it is, is how light we know we can be. 100%. Yeah. That's a question that um, I sort of wanted to ask you. It's a for personal and anyone that is watching this and um, has difficulty like me. So I have been um, quite vocal about everything that's been going on since 2020. Um, And, you know, I've gained confidence. I'm on TikTok. You know, Mm. I I share stuff on Instagram, Facebook. And, you know, I'm still human. So I go through my highs, my lows. I come come across calm. Then I'm like, really like and (laughs) (laughs) I get frustrated but there's one thing so like I am like because I did watch one of your podcasts and you were saying you know we are that light Mm -hmm. and so you know to be for me to be able to be that light is to be able to can you know be congruent with that Mm -hmm. and not react and lately I've been finding that I'm quite reactive because you know on TikTok I mean it's like everyone's a keyboard warrior. There is no consequence to anything. You can say whatever you like, and there's just a huge battle going on um, Mm. with comments. But some of them really irritate and grind my gears, and I find that I'm (laughs) becoming very reactive, and I'm calling people some things, which I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, Mm. I'm trying to be role model, like, hey, look, like, this is the truth. This is stuff that is going on, but I'm still trying to hold that light and be that light. But when mm. I react these ways, it doesn't really make me light. It sort of mm-hmm. portrays mm-hmm. darkness. Mm-hmm. So my question would be, how would I, I mean, how would you, <clears throat> how do you cope with things like that and still hold that light and not react and drop down to that level? Yeah. <laughs> it's a great, it is a great question. I, so there's a couple ways to look at it. I don't know. We don't know if these are real people or they're bots. Mm. Say they're real people. Okay, fine. Um, the, there's a verse in the Bible in first John, it says the spirit of the antichrist is even now. And what that means, and these terms get thrown around as personas, but that's actually an adjective. So Christ is the anointed one to bring freedom, the one who liberates. So a real Christian is a soul liberator, not this religious system of convincing people that already think bad about themselves that they're even worse than they thought in the first place so that they can go to someplace better. Um, No, a real soul liberator. Messiah was to bring freedom, the anointed one to bring freedom. So anti-Christ is anti-freedom. So when you understand that it's not the persona per se, there will possibly be a person who stands in that mantle. And I already believe he's come and he's playing the role that he's playing right now, but um, anti-freedom. So you don't have to defend people have already chosen. I think 2020 was the year of choosing 2021 was the year of life, whether you're going to choose life or not. And 2020, Two is the year of our either standing in our own divinity as as made in the image of the creator or people that want to be in the AI system and dissolve into the Borg. And there is no convincing those that have already chosen. So I just, I detach energetically when I post content, I just let it be. I, I, and there's people I block. I mean, I block people all the time. Like you don't get to come in my space on my car, block goodbye. Um, I think I forget about that button. I, I think I forget about that button because it's, yeah. It, yeah. But I, I, I think it's because like, you know, I'm so like, if I'm going to be on a platform and, and speak my truth, then they get to as well. But then it irritates me. And then I don't block, I don't block them because then I'm like, oh, well then I'm just shutting them down. But I, I need to come to the acceptance. It's okay to block people. It's okay. Yeah, it's, to I think the people. most important thing is to protect your energy. Yeah. Yes. I mean, if your okay. mission is to put content out to, <laughs> to do your part, that's your yeah. mission. It's not to convince. I would, I would ask like, is it to convince others or is it to put it out for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear when they're ready to say, aha. Okay. And if that's the that's purpose, the then you detach from the results and block those people that are, you don't even know if they're people. They just could be arguing with the bot. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. It's a perfect answer. Thank you. And I think, the demon, I think demo, what, what demons are, D as in 
of day d like d e <laughs> moon m o n is of a uh, um variation of moon so it's of the night these spirits are of the darkness like you're either of the sun or you're of the the moon and you have the lunar system and the the solar <laughs> system these the religion of the uh, the sun the religion of these dark night moons and the battle so demons essentially i think operate through the ai system that they can command communicate and manifest and i think we i mean you can't tell me that they're talking about neuralink and this competitor to Neuralink just came out yesterday. It said they're ahead of Elon Musk or whatever the name of the company is, that they're able to infuse technology into human, but what about the soul into technology? They can go both yeah. ways. They can go both yeah. ways. Um, so anyway, I guess I'm just saying, don't worry about, don't worry about the turkeys. Keep posting your content and keep, and then detach and let it be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that preserving your energy too. If, and you have the choice at the end of the day to just shut it down to and protect your space. Mm -hmm. And like when going back to when you first started awakening and, you know, started to realize things and piece things together by going down the, the rabbit holes is, and there's so many, there's so many different rabbit holes. Like I always tell people there's layers and layers of corruption and it is, it is up to the individual whether, you know, you can only meet someone where they're at or, you know, until that wall comes up where it's a bit too much to learn, especially when you go into the darker stuff like the satanic ritual abuse and the child trafficking. So when you started to learn the stuff, and you were essentially sharing it with others, what was their response to you? And, you know, did you have a lot of support around you or other believers around you? Hmm. So interestingly calm believers. And because usually that terms like associated with Christian world, like they're believers and, and Jesus. Uh, I would say that those who, there were people that I love very dearly, dearly who were very close to me as friends that chose to, turn away from the truth and go down the path. And I've grieved that. Mm, um, you do. Yeah, you do. Certainly, certainly. Um, there are those who like the ones I didn't know I was going to wide open, blow their brains. Up, like, Hey, look at all this stuff. And they got it. And they're on fire today. Um, it's interesting. I really do believe in the soul in Judaism that it, they teach in Judaism that the soul has three states, the soul before the body, the soul in the body and the soul after the body. And I really believe in soul contracts and that mm. the law of free will has never been broken. Not one time. And this is what's so fascinating. And it takes accountability and responsibility and courage to really step into this understanding that if the law of free will cannot be broken now, it cannot be broken before we entered the body. So then God gave every soul the opportunity to see what they would step into and choose. And so I want it be who I am today. Had my dad not played the perfect role, the perfect role in my life. And so I have to thank him and bless him mm. for the role that he chose because I would not be me today. Now I mean this in every case, I've had people, I share this and podcasts and I have people come at me like, you don't, you don't know. I'm like, I do, I do know. And mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Stay in victim all day. What do you want to do? Kill everyone. What are you going to do? <laughs> God said, I really believe, look at the pain you're about to take. I mean, I believe this for every stillbirth, every aborted baby, every disabled down syndrome. And Everyone gets to see, but you know, what's so beautiful. I believe that we only, we not only get to see our trajectory, our life and the ripple effect and the, the generations that led to us, mm -hmm. but we get to see the breadth of all the generational lines. So maybe that stillbirth gr crushed that couple that had the baby, certainly gr horrible grief, but the way the family handled it, the parents handled it touched the nurse and the soul could see that nurse was going to come over here in her line and bless all these children. And God says, yeah. you want to go in and do it. And the courageous souls are the ones that say, yeah, I'll go in and do it. And I think the souls that are the perpetrators also say, I think God says the only way they can ascend is if there's pure darkness, are you willing to go in? 
Oh. It makes it's a lot of sense. Horrible. It's going to be karma. There's going to be, but are you willing to go in? And this concept, um, it doesn't excuse. It doesn't um, make anything right that is evil. There is evil and it is to be called out. But how would I know day if I don't know night? That's why the Bible starts at the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So we wouldn't know what light is unless it first was preceded by darkness. And God said he saw the light that it was good and he divided the light from the darkness. So we can't in this 3D existence, the duality. Yes. People have chosen the duality and they're at a soul level. Yeah. They've done exactly what they've chosen to do, which is when Jesus says you are of your father, the devil. D E V I L is the inversion of L I V E D. So devil or lived. So there are the, they are of the father of the inversion of life, death, but they're still serving the most high, the one infinite creator for this whole experience for, for us to know. Wow. And every person who's hurt a person has been hurt by another person. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And which they, is why Jesus said he was without sin, cast the first stone, go for it, go for it. But that stone you throw is coming back to hit you. Do you understand an eye for an eye doesn't mean for, to the victim, go out and hurt the person who blinded your eye in the first place. I, I joke around in keynote talks. I say, have you ever seen a one-eyed person fight a two-eyed person, especially when the one-eyed person lost the eye in the first place of the two-eyed person? That's crazy. What an eye for an eye is means is to take another person's eye is to take my own eye. Whatever I put out Mm. exactly comes back. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that too. And what we're putting out energetically, you know, and and the words that we use Mm -hmm. and, you know, in this time, like I said, like there's this great spiritual side to this awakening where people are learning to trust themselves essentially you know because we've been indoctrinated to look outside ourselves for answers and it's Mm -hmm. i think it's an important time for us to go within to learn about ourselves even those shadow parts of ourselves that we we're not quite ready to deal with that's something that needs to be brought to the Mm -hmm. surface and healed essentially because we're essentially healing that generational line too yeah and, and a lot of that's happening. It's such a beautiful time to be alive. And, you know, I've seen people around me and that I've had relationships with just switch in the last two years since 2020, mm-hmm. like had seen their transformation, then come out of themselves. Like before I started all this, I was such a shy, introverted person. I wouldn't mm-hmm. even dream of talking about what I'm talking about now, you know, and, it, and it's so controversial. You, what, we, what we're speaking is truth, but it's seen as controversial because of mm-hmm. how the media depicts anyone that has these type of conversations, you know, we're seen as conspiracy theorists. Yeah. Um, and that's how, you know, things are deterred. And people are confused because there's all this information out there from the media, from podcasts and documentaries um, sharing the content that we are speaking about and people are confused, you know, and I think it's that's when you need to build up a good moral compass within yourself. And you're able to decipher the information, let that information come through you and let it and ask yourself, does this resonate with my soul? Does this Mm -hmm. feel right? Is this truth? Because when I woke up and I started learning about, you know, the corruption with the child trafficking, and I think that was the biggest insult to my soul was learning about the child trafficking and what has been happening to children in the dark for so long by people in power. You know, mm-hmm. that we've, we've been taught to look up to and trust. And we've given these people our trust. So yeah. I, I, I essentially I felt so insulted. And I think that's what pushed me, what pushed me out of my shell and made me think, I, I need to speak out about this. I need to share this with others so they are able to see what is happening so we can bring forth the change. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's such a great 
time like even though like the shit storms happening around us around the globe and we've got this pandemic playing out we've been able to congregate with what i would call our soul tribe we're yes. able to we put out our light and we're speaking our truth and we're attracting who these souls that are meant to be in this our lives at the moment just like we are now having this conversation i believe mm. that we are meant to see certain things at certain time and connect with certain people and it's it's just been such a great journey you know like mm. such a journey such a healing journey for myself and alicia um do you want to touch on how you awoke into alicia mm. and what happened with you? <laughs> oh well i already spoke about this when i was um introduced onto this show um so it was actually my mum that woke me up so um i feel very blessed to um you know, have a parent that was awake. Um, so she was sort of, um, she started, you know, finding out about the deep state, found out about the Clintons and then all, she went right down the rabbit hole real quick. Like she's, to, and I, I mean, she started opening up my eyes with mud floods in Tartaria and like going, yeah. going back yeah. then. Love yeah, it. so that's how I started and timelines and all that kind of stuff and the Glock Bell um, the German, I think it was the German uh, Glock Bell, mm -hmm. um, Antarctica. So I sort of started there and then went back, <laughs> backwards. So um, at that point I was like, whoa, the world is not what it seems at all. Um, and then she, she was saying something big is going to come. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit and she 2020 was going to be the year. And she figured that out by everything she had been watching. Mm. Um, and so then when obviously uh, the good old COVID hit, um, you know, um, I think it was in the end of 2019. So she was seeing footage um, on BitChute um, with Wuhan, what was going on down there. She was like, oh, okay, this, this could be potentially a bioweapon. So we just have to protect ourselves here. She's not too sure if it's going to be a legitimate yeah. release and actually do what it's meant to do or it's going to be sort of um the test, the test run. Yeah. 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 yeah so then when it um when it started to hit over here in new zealand um i just watched i just watched and so mum taught me how to sort of read the play uh mm -hmm. when it comes to the media and um, you can read the narrative and things like that. Because I would be like to mum, how do you do that, though? How do you, how do you read the narrative? And mm. um, now, <laughs> now when stuff comes out in the media, I'm like, oh, as soon as the whole Ukraine <laughs> thing, <Yeah. as> soon, <laughs> I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like the Ukraine and Russia thing, I was like, hang on, reverse it. Reverse yeah, what's happening. Does. Swap it yeah. over. Yeah. That's what's really going down. And then there's obviously something happening in the background. Yeah. That, and so then you do your digging that way and then you find out the truth. So, yeah, so that's sort of how I woke up. My good old mum. That's amazing. <laughs> well, God bless her. That's yeah. that's really beautiful to have them on that. Um, yeah. That loves you enough to, you know, just share that. I think that's beautiful. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. And um, it's quite cool. Like, you know, our household – <laughs> her and I were like, did you see that in the media? Because we stay yeah. on board. <laughs> we, we, yeah. we, you know, if you've got to sort of, I know it's really hard for a lot of people that have awoken to the media and everything. I know it's really hard to watch the bullshit really that's coming out of the TV and yeah. um, and the articles. But for me, because I am trying to stay on the ball and educate people or keep people in the know of what's going on, you have to watch it. You have to yeah. watch it to dissect it to know what's actually happening. So it's really funny. Like at home, did you see that? Oh, bloody Jacinda, like, <laughs> you know, doing this. This is what's going to happen. Watch this space. And, I mean, in 2020, 2021, I was putting it out there. Oh, yeah, another lockdown's going to happen. And people are like, no, it's not. I'm like, watch this space. Yeah. Two months later, lockdown. And it's really cool because then it got a lot of people's attention. They're like, oh, well, Alicia said that there was going to be a lockdown. We kind of mocked mm -hmm. her a little bit. But. Happens. everything that's happening <laughs> is kind of you know it's, it's come true everything that like people like um us we've said it's going to happen it, it's happening yeah so yeah so that's it's been an absolute um I, I wouldn't change it for the world 
I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, I don't remember. That's good point there. Yeah, I don't remember who I was really before all this. Mm. I, I I don't really remember who I was in here. It's definitely um, sparked my purpose, mm. um, my soul yeah. journey here. It has brought me um, closer to people, to br- new people. Like right now, I mean, I'm not. I, I'm actually based in Auckland, but I'm actually further down the North Island at the moment, staying at one of my soul sisters houses because I, I miss them so much I was like I've got to come for a holiday so um mm-hmm. you know it's just uh, it's been beautiful um a beautiful connection and I found a whole new meaning to uh friendship soul soul tribe mm-hmm. um and everything like that it's just been amazing so I wouldn't change it for the world mm, that's really beautiful yeah it <laughs> seems like um it seems like People were given a choice, whether you would compromise your sovereignty for something in return, a promotion, a job, you know, whatever it was, it was just the choice that people were given. And there were those who said, it doesn't matter what the choice is. Mm. I am, I make this very clear. Like I told a judge, I want to wear a mask when I was summoned for jury duty. Like I was, I am. (laughs) There's, there's a story in the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who, when the king said, everyone bow before him as God, and everyone bow, and these three guys are standing there, and they're like, bow, and they don't bow, and they're like, if you don't bow, we're going to throw, throw you in the fire, uh, this, this furnace, and they're like, do what you got to do, we're not bowing, and they, they get thrown in there, and it says one appeared, a fourth appeared like into the son of man, and they came out not even smelling like smoke, but the people that threw them in the fire, the fire was so hot, they died. And I feel like that. And it's like, let me make something very clear. My knee is not fucking touching <laughs> this ground. <laughs> so you have to decide whether you want to try to force me with the same force that I am willing to not comply. And I think that awoken in me, it just awoken this volcano of just no one will ever make me do something ever again against my sovereign will period. doesn't matter if you say I could cure the world with this. If I don't want to do it, I'm not doing it. Yeah. That's it. (laughs) Stand your ground. Absolutely. And I think too, we've been the the carrot has been dangled essentially in so many ways in front of people, like people being offered free donuts to get the jab. They've been, their livelihoods have been put at stake yeah. and, you know, to be able to stand your ground and stand in your truth. It's such a powerful thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, it gives you so much strength to know yes. that, you know, you're standing for something good. You're standing for your, like you said, your sovereignty. Yes. People can't take that away. It's a choice you have at the end of the day. And a lot of, I feel for the people that were backed into a corner, you know, their livelihoods were put at stake if they weren't, you know, they didn't comply. Um, And, you know, I'm just lucky, I guess, that I'm in a position where I was able to, you know, turn that down and and stand my ground. Because in Mm. America too, it was in full force, you know. What what is it? It's still, it's still. that was my next question. What is what is the feel? And you know, even in your hometown with people, are, are you still having to wear ma- masks wherever you go? Or no. Well, up? so <laughs> I moved in. I moved my family. I was given the ultimatum to get it or to you know not work there. And I said, actually, neither. I'm going to file religious exemption. You don't need to know my religion, but I, I, my buddy who's also an engineer and scientist did all this research that there are aborted fetal cells and every single one of the options out there. And I said, I'm not going to consume anything in my body at all. Knowingly now that I've done the research with aborted fetal cells. Mm. So Mm. there you go. The answer is no. And they said, okay, we're going to grant you temporary exemption. But my wife and I were, um, pregnant with baby number four. And so we moved from Seattle, Washington, which is in the Northwest, which is like Microsoft headquarters, Starbucks headquarters, Costco headquarters, Amazon headquarters, all the people, all the players, all the things, Boeing's headquarters um, to Dallas, Texas. And it is two different worlds. It's fascinating. And it's been um, somewhat, I grieved when I first got here, how 
disassociated those people are and how easily compliant they are. And um, we were ostracized. My kids weren't allowed to play with other, they, these families, because we didn't mass, we didn't, you know, we weren't participating in this, that we got isolated in this neighborhood. Um, and now kids playing in the street last night, there's like 12 kids riding bikes, climbing trees. My daughter caught two frogs. I mean, it was like the dream of like how life should be and yeah. black neighbors and Muslim neighbors and a, a self-described redneck and liberal people that voted for Joe Biden. And we're all sitting, having beer and drinking and talking. And, and we're like, this is the beauty of humanity. Yeah. This is how it can be. We all know yeah. who you voted for. It doesn't matter. We are kind to one another. We love one another. We honor one another. And um, truly it's been tremendous to be down here and it's two different worlds within the same country, unfortunately. Um, but people are starting to, sadly, the people that are getting sick that I know of personally are the ones who took it. And, and so I think that's waking a lot of people up of like, wait, I thought I wasn't now, you know, Bill Gates came out and they said he's, he has COVID now and he was fourth boosted and all this stuff, which we know is not really him, but regardless, they say that. So that's going to wake people more up. Um, the American spirit is a beautiful sad that the cabal has used the American spirit to Mm. go and fight and kill a lot of innocent humans. Um, the, the U S soldier is such a beautiful soul is, uh, is a really tremendous because they're willingly and they're servants, but they get used and abused. Like so many things happen, but the American spirit is such, it's awakening. I think in the world, it's like Q it's like, remember who you are. Remember what you are. Remember who you are. Remember, remember. It's like, Mm -hmm. I did this podcast, remembering to mem. these are, this is the members of my body. And we are to put ourselves in right state to stand again in the correct, the correct order we are intended to be sovereign, whole, loving, light, salt, a conduit of energy to be the hold space for one another, to not be the ego and to be seen and, but to just listen and to, to love one another. And so I want to love one another. Yeah. To love one another. And, um, you know, it's interesting that on the the whole journey since 2020, again, like that prompting of not voting, um, for Trump in 2016, I really felt clear that I'm going to continue to put out my own content. Um, and I had an Anon, I, I had a, a pseudo name and on name on Twitter that got taken down with one of the, so I did have my, a, a sub brand that wasn't associated to me where I was just letting it rip. But because, you know, I've about to have four children and a three and, and, you know, I have to provide for the family. I had to be very careful, but regardless of all that, my content, I feel like I'm here on this earth to remind people, God has sent me here to reclaim their sovereign birthright, to stand in love, to face the darkness right in the eyes. Like do not like look it right in the eye. Mm. And then yeah. go right through it and realize that the darkness will, I said this on a podcast, I, darkness exists to remind light its power. As soon as the sun decides to rise, darkness bows in honor and says, here, you know, take it, please. And this is what we're experiencing, that we are the light of the world. And Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, doesn't qualify, doesn't say, if you are this, if you believe this, if you do this, you're the light of the world. He simply says, ye, plural you, ye are the light of the world. Like, remember who you yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. No. <laughs> well, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it too, because we have forgotten who we are through the programming, through the indoctrination. And again, we've been taught to look outside of ourselves, just coming back yeah. to that center and knowing that we are connected to source. We don't need to be in a building, you know, of some sort or, you know, go through a pastor to connect with God. He is always there with us. And if we always. open our heart always. and yeah, and just be the peace and the love. And, and that's, it's as simple as that. It really is, is raising your vibration and not giving mm-hmm. into the, the fear. I think, mm-hmm. you know, well, fear is low vibration. 
isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yes. It's been stuck in the matrix system and that's what it is. It's just suppressing all that and keeping us in that low vibration. And the fear yes. is everywhere. We're being fear mongered mm. in every little angle. Every so when you look aspect, at yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I mean, it's so It's so oh, subtle right. that if you don't go to college, if you don't yeah. do, it's all, it's, it's fear overtly and subvertly in that it's, if you don't do, something will happen. And if you do do, something will happen. Meaning like if you yeah. speak out, you're going to get hurt. But if you don't do this, you're going to get hurt. And it's just this fascinating time where humans are being married into this relationship with this one word and it's courage. Mm. I love that. That's yeah. really what we're awakening to is the courage to say, regardless if I die or not, I'm going out being my own hero. Yeah. I'm going right out. out of the bang. <laughs> yeah, I'm going. And um, what's beautiful is too, uh, getting back to the soul journey stuff, you know, in the movie, um, I know one of these newer Star Wars movies where Ray goes down into the cave down below and, and she sees herself at that glass wall and, and there's a whole bunch of her and she snaps and it goes like back to her. I really believe that when we heal, when we break every freaking cycle, when we see, oh, there's a chain, there's tethered to that, like smash it, crush it, like go into it, face the trauma. When we heal ourselves, we heal every one of our ancestors. We break, we set them all free and we set the future posterity free. And like, we are the greatest gifted generation to ever stand on this plane and say, I broke every cycle. Like it's just truly incredible. And that's when I think God says, well done, my good and faithful servant. It's like, yeah, <laughs> that was incredible. Did you see what I broke? And he's like, yeah, I saw it. It's like amazing. I walked with you the whole time. Like, wow, that's what I think is happening right now is we're waking up encouraged to the gift that we have to break every cycle. And the King James Bible, I say this, I, it's so interesting. There's so much attack of the King James Bible and there's been so much attack. And the Jesuits attempted two assassination attempts on King James um, because he was the very first Protestant king of the United, if he was the first king of the United Kingdom, so there's unity, there's oneness. He was also the very first Protestant king to step or to sit on the throne of England, a true Protestant, and he died early. And there's been so much written about him since. But this is what's interesting: the King James Bible, which awoke in the world at the time in the 1600s, 1611, when it came out, it was another great awakening. It blew open everything. The powers of the church got eviscerated when someone read the text for themselves like uh, uh no i'm sorry it doesn't say what you're saying it says this so um the king james bible says this in john 3 16 most people will say it in their head like um i'm not john 3 16 john 14 6 J jesus says i am so he declares i am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but and the king james bible says but by me mm -hmm. and every other Bible version Thanks. since 1881 says through me. Right. And have we become more sovereign, more free, more powerful since 1881 or less sovereign, less free, less powerful since 1881 in the 1881. You, we know after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated and the U S signed away a couple of years later to the federal banker or the central bankers and the U S went into debt for the last time. And the progressive era starts and the cabal takes power. And it's just, the world gets decimated after the 1880s. And I'm telling everyone, the King James Bible tells you, Jesus never said, come through me. He said, stand side by side with me that no man comes to the father, but by my side, as we are going to the father because there is only one mediator between God and man. And that is, that is the man Christ Jesus to say, when you pray, don't talk to me. Jesus said, when you pray, pray our father, <laughs> go back to the father, go back to God, because you're right. If a religion went away, electricity went away, books went away, everything went away. And we're on an Island smaller than New Zealand in the ocean somewhere god would still exist mm. source would still speak to us yeah. we would still have god written on our hearts so all this other extemporaneous 
bullshit means nothing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. Fired up about it. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I can feel you're fired up too. <laughs> it feels so <good. laughs> <You're fired> up. <laughs> awesome. oh, I guess um, the last question I have for you is where do you think this is going? So this awakening mm. is happening. Essentially, more and more people are coming to terms with what is happening. You know, I, I believe people are waking up every day, whether it be through the pandemic or through going through some other rabbit hole. Where do you think humanity is going? Hmm. I keep seeing, and I've been seeing for the past year, this giant wall of water. And I wish you could see like so high. It's, I can see it right now. And I've been seeing it for the past year. It is such a high wall of water and it's kind of squared off at the top, rounded edges. And it's this huge wall. And we kind of get premonitions of the uh, what's on the other side of this wall. We kind of know, but we can't see clearly it, because we're not supposed to, because God does not manipulate, coerce anyone. So he doesn't show what's on the other side because he doesn't want to manipulate. He wants everyone to choose. And I think what, what is happening right now, it's not that this is what I was shown that there are some people left who are going to sell their selves to this system that is about to go away. Mm. It's not people that are still going to wake up is that there's people trying to get famous in the 3d world. That's about to be wiped away. God is giving every per to the very last soul on this plane, the choice. But as soon as whoever is the last soul chooses this wall of water is going to crash down. And what I heard was, First comes truth, which is this wall of water. Mm. Then comes healing. Mm. And I think what's going to happen, and we are going to have a global healing. We are going to fill stadiums, 70,000, 100,000, 150,000 people. And the spirit of God is going to move and heal. And we're going to invite people. We're going to have volunteers down. We're going to invite people who have been hurt, who just need to be held for the very first time in their life. It's not going to be religious. No religion. Religion's gone. By religion, we don't want you here. We want God and we want truth and we want freedom. And like, so people will be held that need to be held. People will be able to cry who need to cry. There is this going to be this massive moment, movement. And this is what's so beautiful. The perpetrators who have hurt other people will also be given the opportunity to come. Mm -hmm. Come heal. Because truth has nothing to fear. Light is the power. Darkness is not the power. So when the light is available, you can call everyone out of the darkness anyway and say, you are in darkness now. Are you ready to heal? And think of the humbling, the true heart and soul breaking humility that will come and say, we know what you did. And yet we still will hold space for you to heal. If you're willing to heal, if you're willing to be free, we'll hold space for you. We, there is a power greater than any victim mindset can ever fathom and that is the power of love and that is the power of healing so this is what i believe and the bible says in revelation 1 6 or the king james bible for <laughs> none other bible except the king james bible says this but it says and he has made us kings and priests unto god his father since 1881 the bibles have said and he has made us a royal priesthood doesn't mean that we're sovereign it means we're serving a sovereign which is what the pontiff wants which is popery uh but we are all kings and not a gender. You're a king. I'm a king. It's a sovereign state. It's not a gender role. If there's not a king, there's a queen. Okay, fine. It's still the head of the state. We are all kings, but the true king, we have been sold. Humanity has been sold a lie of what a king is. The, the deep state cabal world has taken the word king and made everyone serve king mm -hmm. and usurped everything from everyone and, and why the United States and its origin was so profoundly powerful, whether they were Tartarian, I don't know what America like origin was like, who really was Benjamin Franklin? Who really, I mean, if you read his writings are, there is, they're like reading Aristotle. They're like reading these great Greek thinkers. He is so profound. And he was the one to come up with the patent for the very first time ever. The King could not take the idea from you. This is a concept of America is incredible. What it gave to the world, it gave the world sovereignty. But 
the true king preserves the freedom of all. Mm. The false king takes freedom from all. And so when it says that he has made us kings and priests unto God as father, I believe the ones who have awakened and have healed now and are doing the work to heal and free themselves are going to stand not as I told you so, because there will be no ego. It, we will all be humbled when the truth gets revealed, all of us, even the ones that are awake as much as we think we, like I've gone down as deep as rabbit holes, I think as possible. Still, we will be the, the, the hybrid creatures that have been made in these underground um worlds and they're not done they're not military bases they're from the mud flood cities that they have all technology that we don't have access to on the surface so they can do all these things down below i don't like i don't like to call them deep underground military bases it's just the military took over these these things down below but the creatures the hybrid the you know when in new york they started releasing the pictures on the mercy ship um and you, you remember some of those like the ears were just formed. I don't know if you remember, like, you know, they start. there was like a hoofed person and people like, what did they bring out of? Yeah. What is going on? I think we will all grieve. We will all cry. But what's beautiful is those who have awoken, they know Q knows God knows our algorithms know. However, it knows like, these are the people who have stood for love, truth, and righteousness amidst the darkest uh, opposition who will stand for love truth and healing and it won't be an ego so that when everyone comes out of the fog and we all heal we will be the ones to preserve their freedom not take oh, yes yes wow that was beautiful it was and it is it's it's not about you i told you so when when other mm-hmm. people have awoken oh, because we've all been through that grief because it is that you do you grieve your old life when you yes. awaken to the truth and you know how we've been living in like this box and yeah. there's so much more to reality and there's so much more so if we meet them with compassion we meet them halfway and say you know we know what it's like we know what you're feeling it's coming from the heart and compassion. That's all we can do at this stage. And when we welcome our others and bro- other brother and sisters to, mm-hmm. to this great awakening that's happening. But thank you so much for your time today. I think that's a great way to finish our interview. And we really appreciate the work you're doing and your podcast and the conversations you're having with your guests. Like I said, it's, it's so important to have these safe, a safe space for people, especially ones that are awakening and, you know, they don't know where to go. I think, you know, when we first awoken in 2020, we were kind of like running, well, I was running around like a headless chicken, like, what? <laughs> you know, where do I go? Who else knows about this? But <laughs> if you, we've, now that we've gone through our journeys and we've done the healing, I, you know, we're not completely here. We're still learning as we go. We're creating this space for people to have this conversation and talk about these harder issues and you know get to the nitty-gritty of things because like I'm done with small talk you know I want to know about a person so I want to know about your journey and what you've been through and and this is what it's all about this not having these superficial relationships ships with people but these deeper relationships where you know we are so much more alike than we've been told you know and I think our humanness is what connects us ultimately yeah Yeah. thank you brother for today my pleasure both of you are such beautiful souls thank you sisters thank you for having me on and really thank you thank you you. (laughs) I think our viewers are really gonna like this one (laughs) (laughs) awesome Awesome, guys yes so thank you for watching today everyone um such an amazing conversation and um you know be sure to check in next week we're going to keep these conversations going and thank you once again brother have a good good evening where you are at your part of the world and as we say, kakite. <laughs> <laughs>